Hey math students, it's time for us to talk about trigonometry. Okay, now you've probably heard about sines and cosines and tangents and, well, secants and cosecants and cotangents. If you haven't, I would like to introduce you to sines and cosines and tangents and cosecants and secants and cotangents. And let me tell you what these are. These are merely ratios. That's all they are. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Here's a triangle. It's triangle ABC. Each corner uh, is uh, denoted by a capital letter, each side by a lowercase letter. And so we have angle A here. By the way, angle C is our right angle. This is a right triangle. So this is angle A, and it has, uh, we have written here that the sine of A, and let me stop right now. What I have written here, these are abbreviations. Please, please don't ever say the sin or the cos or the tan. These are abbreviations. The actual words are sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right? So, back to what we were saying. The sine of angle A. Now again, I said this is a, th these functions are ratios. The domain of the function is an angle. That is to say, when you take the sine of something, what you're taking is the sine of an angle. So this is sine of angle A. The sine of angle of angle A is little a over little c. What does that mean? It means this length divided by this length. Okay? Now, how do we determine which lengths we're talking about? Well, this length is the side that is opposite angle A. And by opposite, I mean it's not touching angle A. This length right here is the hypotenuse. That's pretty easy to tell what it is. It's the one that's opposite the right angle. And it's also the longest, the longest side. So sine of A is A over C. The cosine of A is B over C, over C, this side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of A is this side divided by this side. We're not using the hypotenuse when calculating the ratio of the tangent. We'll get to these in just a second. Let's focus on sine, cosine, and tangent. Usually we don't think of these when we're thinking, what's the sine of this angle? What's the cosine of this angle? We don't think uh, A, B, C. What we think is the opposite side, the adjacent side, the, the hypotenuse. So actually, let me, uh, let me just change this. And instead of saying A and C and B and C and A and B, what I'm going to say is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the opposite over the adjacent. We'll think of it that way. And I think that's actually an easier way of thinking of uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, I have advice for you. My advice is when you think of the six trigonometric functions, think of these three, and then think of these three laid out like this. And there's a reason why. Let me change these over here. Instead of saying C over A and C over B, uh, we'll say hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse over adjacent, and uh, adjacent over opposite. Okay? You've probably noticed by now, but let me just fill you in anyway. All of these are just the reciprocals of all of these. Okay? Remembering that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent is kind of easy. Remembering that the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine requires a little more uh, 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 memorization on your part because what most people want to think is they want to think that the co is opposite, is, is the reciprocal of the co. That, that doesn't work. The cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine, the secant is a reciprocal of the cosine, and the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Okay? Got it? So let's, uh, uh, let's look at a sample uh, uh, triangle. Uh, so let's look at, uh, let's see, what do we use? Let's use the triangle that has, this side is 12 and this side is five and this side is 13. Obviously my triangle is not drawn to scale. So, you know, sorry. Uh, so the sine of angle A is going to be, here's A. Opposite over hypotenuse is 5 over 13. The cosine of angle A is 
that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be 12 over 13. The tangent of angle A is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's 5 over 12. Okay? Cosecant, secant, and cotangent, easy. Cosecant of A will be reciprocal of that, 13 over 5. The secant of A will be the reciprocal of this, 13 over 12. And the cotangent of A is the reciprocal of the tangent, 12 over 5. Easy enough, right? And you know, while we're at it, let's look at uh, the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and tangent of angle B, okay? So let's see. The sine of angle B is going to be, so now we're looking from this perspective. Opposite is here, hypotenuse is still there, so that's going to be 12 over 13. The cosine of angle B, and I hope you can see this. Yeah, I think you can. Cosine of angle B uh, is adjacent, that's 5 over 13. 5 over 13. And the tangent of angle B is opposite over adjacent, that's 12 over 5. The cosecant of angle B is 13 over 12, that's because it's the reciprocal of that. The secant of angle B is 13 over 5, it's a reciprocal of that one. And the cotangent of angle B is 5 over 12, the reciprocal of that one. Now you may be noticing, hey, I keep seeing the same fractions over and over and over. Yes, you do. You do see those same fractions over and over and over. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at which ones are the same. The sine of A and the cosine of B, those are the same. Here, let me uh, use a different color. So these are the same. And the cosine of A and the sine of B, those are the same. The sine of A and the cosine of B, those are both 5 over 13. And the cosine of A and the sine of B, those are both 12 over 13. So it looks like in a single triangle, the sine of one angle is going to be the cosine of another angle. And the cosine of one angle is going to be the sine of another angle. As it turns out, that is absolutely true. Now, think for a second about the word cosine. Sounds a lot, a lot like sine, right? It's cosine. That co at the beginning, C-O, that stands for complement. A and B, these are complementary angles. They add up to 90 degrees, right? Think about it. It's a right angle. Here's 90 degrees here, so these other two have to add up to 90. So if they're complementary angles, what we're finding is the sine of one angle is the cosine of that angle's complement. Okay, it's the cosine of the complementary angle. And the cosine of one angle is the sine of that angle's complement. Huh. And then we'll also see that the tangent of angle A is the cotangent of angle B. Again, co. And now we kind of see how these words relate with one another. And the secant of angle A is the cosecant of angle B, 13 over 12. So again, that co, the cosine simply means the sine of the complementary angle. The cotangent means the tangent of the complementary angle. And the cosecant means the secant of the complementary angle. So we got that we have that relationship between all of those uh, functions. Uh, let's look at another one. Uh, let's look at, uh, and I'm just going to erase this part. Um, let's say we have this angle, uh, we're going to say that this side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 3. Um, remember that theorem, that great theorem, that fantastic theorem that's everybody's famous? The Pythagorean theorem, that's what I'm talking about. Pythagorean theorem says that the uh, one side squared plus another side squared is the hypotenuse squared. So if this side is 1 and this side is 3, that means 1 squared plus this thing squared is 3 squared. 1 plus this thing squared is 9. This thing squared must be 8. And the square root of 8 is 2 times the square root of 2. So that's going to be what that side is. Okay, the sine of angle A. Here we are in angle A. Opposite is 1. Hypotenuse is 3. Cosine of angle A. Uh, adjacent is 2 root 2. Uh, hypotenuse is 3. Tangent of angle A. 
Opposite is 1. Adjacent is 2 root 2. So I'm going to say 1 over 2 root 2. And usually we write that as 2 root 2 over 4. Uh, sine of angle B. So B is here. It's going to be this over this. That's 2 root 2 over 3. And you know something? I can just look up, up here. The cosine of B is going to be the sine of A. That's 1 over 3. And the tangent of B is going to be the co... Oh, I haven't done that one yet. So the tangent of B is going to be opposite over adjacent. That's 2 root 2 over 1. That's just 2 squared of 2. Okay. Cosecant. The reciprocal of 1 third is 3. Secant. The reciprocal of 3 over 2 root... Uh, of 2 root 2 over 3 is... 3 over 2 root 2, which is generally written as uh, 3 root 2 over uh, 4. Uh, the cotangent of A is a reciprocal of the tangent of A. Remember the tangent of A was 1 over 2 root 2? That means this is 2 root 2. Uh, cosecant of B is going to be the secant of A. That's 3 root 2 over 4. The secant of B is the cosecant of A. That's 3. And the cotangent of B is the tangent of A, and that's 2 root 2 over 4. I hope that shows up in the video. Yeah. Okay? So that's how we come up with those, uh, with those all six trigonometric functions of particular triangles. Okay? Now, uh, a couple things I want to point out to you. Um, two of those things I've already pointed out. Actually, a few things I want to point out. Two of those I've already pointed out. One is that we have this relationship between the functions on the right and the functions on the left. That everything over here is just the reciprocal of everything over here. The other thing I wanted to point out was the, the, the role of co, okay? How cosine is the sine of the complementary angle. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out was uh, the tangent and the cotangent. Let's look at this for a second. Uh, matter of fact, let me make some room here. Uh, If I took, and I'm going to just generalize these again, I'm going to call these uh, A and C and B again. So if I take the sine of angle A and I divide it by the cosine of angle A, sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, that's A over C, and the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's b over c, and when you divide fractions, you multiply times the reciprocal, that second fraction. So I'm going to get a over c times c over b, which turns out to be a over b. And isn't that something? Yes, that is something. That's the tangent of a. So for any angle, the tangent of that angle is the sine over the cosine of that angle. The cotangent of angle A is going to be, like we said, it's the reciprocal of the tangent. And the reciprocal of tangent is simply going to be cosine of A divided by the sine of A. Okay? So, four things I want, to I want you to come away with uh, from this video. One, the definition of all six of those functions. Two, what co means, okay, the complementary angles and how those relate with one another. Three, that all the functions on the right side were the reciprocal of all the functions on the left side. And four, the tangent of any angle is just the sine of that angle divided by the cosine. And the cotangent is the cosine divided by the sine. Okay? I think that's enough for now. See you next video. Bye-bye.